Jack specific is New York as fuck. All right, what the hell am I talking about? Well, the creator of the company, Jack Friedman? Friedman? I, I don't know. John Freeman, who is Gordon Freeman's brother. Is such a businessman that he not only came up with Jack's, but THQ, LJN, and kept the swagger to be called a philanthropist in Wikipedia. A king of queens that made LJN by 30, THQ by 50, and our topic at 55. Jax was created at a time where the big two, Hasbro and Mattel, uh, for those of you who speak in game companies, are on par with like Sony and Microsoft, eating up about a third of the market worth 15 billion in the 90s. If you care to find out what that equates to in your current year, I trust you to use a search engine to find a calculator. I don't want to jump in too early on our later topics, but Jax made a name by taking the social way of building a company, making deals with other brands and licenses. This wasn't anything new for Friedman. Anyone who knows the names THQ and LJN in the video game space knows they were number one in getting licensed games out. I do want to point out that all three companies are incredibly closely related and tend to share their name across various things. Uh, you'll see the Jax names in video games or THQ on toys. Jax was primarily the toy arm of this King Ghidorah head arm, I don't know. Friedman being the archetype for CEOs was into cars. However, instead of just focusing on ones he could drive, he quote, loved diecast cars too. Think of Matchbox, Hot Wheels, those cars made of metal. So much so that he ended up mixing his love and business practice to create toys for Nickelodeon, Disney, Hello Kitty, WWE, so on. And this was in 99 when toy sales were super down, but Jax was still a top 10 fastest growing company according to Fortune. Setting these deals up gave Jax a strong access to recognizable names in various spaces, movies, TVs, comic books, wrestling. While Friedman retired in 2010 to spend more time with his family, Jax continues to this day. While you don't hear the company's name spoken in many circles, at least not as much as back when a certain line of toys were in every kid's house, they are still alive. While not a billion dollar company, they still beat most of their yearly goals for revenue and seem to be sustainable as an American business, which is oddly refreshing to see when you think about an American business. I'm not gonna pretend to stan a company despite whatever positives I might've said earlier. A company exists to make money and would sooner make you dig your own grave and charge you for the shovel if it made more money year over year. But I did wanna talk a little bit about a man who at one point saw the American dream, attained it, made more money that would be considered even conceivable to us and retired as a true king of queens prior to his death. That joke sucked and he's leaving it in the video. All right, let's get into these toys. Now, Jax Pacific has been making toys since day one. Uh, some are licensed and some are owned by the company outright due to acquisitions. I won't go year by year on these since Jax has been producing them both under their own label and directly under their license name since the 90s. Today that happens a lot less often, I imagine due to some sort of fee similar to game companies having to pay extra to not have the Unity logo or Unreal logo when a game starts. So instead I'll be covering the greatest hits that I can find easily or ones I find particularly interesting. Jax wanted some of that sweet foam dart gun money, so they came up with Max Force. Now, instead of making darts out of foam or bullshit Nerf is talking about so you don't go and buy cheap ones by the hundreds because the darts are stupidly expensive, uh, Max Force are spitball guns. Now, you aren't supposed to use actual spit, but they are, quote, soft splat pellets, which are made of a mixture of paper and wood. The pellets are then dipped into water before being loaded into the gun and fired at distances up to 100 feet. They also disintegrate upon impact without causing any bodily harm. I'm not crazy over the idea of a gun with degradable ammo, which means you're gonna run through the darts quick and have to buy more, but at that point, 
it wouldn't take long for little Timmy to just make his own ammo and break it because that's not the right size of the jams or whatever. Uh, best fun fact from all this is when they hocked it on David Letterman to have him say, you can save $40 and get a straw and a napkin. Uh, this was prior to him unloading a bandolier of this shit on an audience. I remember seeing these all the time on TV, but never in person. Flywheels are just sideways blay blades. Blay blah 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 blah. Bay blades that have rubber or at least plastic, but I remember the sick ass commercial of a kid launching one up a quarter pipe at a skate park and getting crazy air. 200 scale miles per hour is cute as a selling point to me because these things go at a max of like 10 miles an hour. A cheap toy to make, but the idea of different types of wheels for different conditions is novel enough for me to want one. What the fuck is this anime shit? Oh, this was when Nickelodeon tried hard to get into anime like Cartoon Network did, but refused to do anything that couldn't be marketed into a toy. And man, it's really generic looking. Like, this is every toy anime trope from the design to the premise to having plastic toys with trading cards. Ah, don't she. It somehow got three seasons you can watch on Tubi, which says a bit about the show that it's completely free on Tubi, but man, these toys look cheap. <laughs> okay, I actually like this toy's idea of being a telephoto camera with a crazy amount of zoom. I don't believe in the 800 times that the box claims, but a camera with a good zoom and works in still image and video modes is cool. Also, yes, I mostly picked it for the kid pogging in every image. So I was looking for more lists of toys that Jax have made in the past, and guess what? Most are on a fandom page, shamelessly copying the Wikipedia page word for word. But I did find a comment on one of the fandom pages, I lost which one, that had the words, quote, the cringiest toy ever, and a link to Twitter. This thing makes me believe that Jack Pacific will make just about anything a toy, and I stand by that belief with an image of it. Just take it in. Hey, pull my finger! Okay, all that was just a preface for the main thing Jack still sells the most of to this day, action figures. And technically dolls, uh, semantics until somebody makes small soldier toys. There's actually a huge list of all the figures that I can find here. Everything from Pokemon to Dragon Ball to Mega Man, Power Rangers, Taylor Swift. Does that mean I get to put all of those in the tags now for search engine ops? The funniest of these to me are the blatant tie-in movie shit like the Sonic movies and box office whatevers like Real Steel. They're still making toys of other popular franchises like Apex Legends. I get that somebody probably wants this, but isn't Apex like M-rated? Just kind of weird to me. Black and Decker too. I guess getting boys TM into tools makes sense and there's a stove too. Glad we learned that everyone needs to learn how to cook. Yes, I'm looking at you, person of unknown gender identification who I do not want to be presuming. The main event, pun intended, was Jax's license with WWE ever since the Attitude Era. Think The Rock, Stone Cold, etc. This has always been about three things. Money, power, and respect. Respect! Since these are based on actual wrestlers, I know if I was one, I'd feel I had, quote, made it, become big, small, Funko Pop, poggers. <laughs> they also have some of the other wrestling promotions like WCW and TNA, but they seem to have missed out on more modern ones like AEW. Those are being made more by Diamond Select, which is more of an adult marketed toy brand specifically looking for the 30 year old who will actually buy these, aka me. In order to get faces like Spongebob, Shawn Michaels, and Spider-Man all under one roof, you need to have licensing and partnerships, to which I have to be somewhat impressed. The main Jax website proudly displays all of their current licenses, most of which tend to be the ones I've referenced earlier, but it looks like the WWE one lapsed, like all of the newer toys I find of WWE of the last few years seem to be made by Mattel. Otherwise, we had game shows, TV shows, both live and animated, movies, general company brands, music artists, video game franchises, a fucking 
poker company. I think the more uncanny ones are based on video games, since the idea of physically holding a toy of a character that only exists to be hyper violent or controlled via a plastic stick is weird. The Nintendo toys are the main ones I think of as strange to me. Join me, Luigi, Princess Toadstool, and Toad. We're gonna hurt people or even kill them. Like, I eventually got wanting an amiibo due to the NFT, oops, NFC properties that worked with the games you were already playing, plus the fact those were sold directly by Nintendo. Seeing the weird Mario dioramas? Their worries, not mine. Animal Crossing figures of Tom Nook and K.K. Slider and a single figure of Link from Breath of the Wild or Slippy from Star Fox makes me feel like Jack's kind of shotgun whatever they could green light from Nintendo. At least the Sonic ones seem a bit more consistent, like they look to be mostly based around the brand in general, but they did have a bunch of them specifically made for those live action Jim Carrey movies that I refuse to watch. Not to mention the Star Wars toys. I think these were coming out till pretty recently since I see figures for The Mandalorian, which came out in, damn, 2019, really. Knock that pussy down, cuz. <laughs> you fucking suck, bro, I'm cracked. <laughs> we also got DC Comics. Wait, why is it officially called DC Comics? DC is an acronym for Detective Comics. So it's Detective Comic Comic. I think the strangest group of all has to be the live action movie toys, specifically these. Nothing like Ted, but Elf, Superbad, Big Lebowski, fucking what? All right, let's look at whatever Shelf Talkers is. Just pull the string to hear one of the 14 memorable lines from your favorite movies. Shelf Talkers TM includes three replaceable LR44 battery. Wait, three? LR44s are like, watch batteries, so they're super tiny but expensive. Just slap a AAA in there and move on, dog. You're gonna make some kids steal from their grandma's hearing aids. The Beavis and Butthead ones look the best to me, but I think that's because they aren't going for the uncanny look of a real human. Also, there's a line around Target, the store. Like, not the dog, Bullseye, the Bull Terrier, but specifically, as of 2023, a cart and the dumbass cash register. Do people really want this? I know there's a ton of Pixar toys I'm missing, Sonic and Mario, Haribo, the candy company. All right, I respect the hustle. The bear itself is actually pretty cute. M Mucha Lucha. Oh shit, Mucha Lucha is a brand I would have been on board for. Mainly for a love of the art style and a long time love of wrestling. Respect. I'd go more specific on these, but eh, they mostly look okay and I didn't care to look up sales or anything, so let's move on. So this is the part of you probably clicked on already knowing about? Please leave a comment about how I got something wrong in this section that you saw in a Scott the Waz video. Back in the early 2000s, the likelihood that you were a kid or knew a kid with one of these things was so high that you could probably combine the scrap in them to buy a real video game console. Fortunately for Jax, that wasn't the point. Instead, these were incredibly affordable, dedicated gaming consoles. Moby Games has about 26 of these listed under the Jax names with a separate 22 published by them. The difference being that the published games are re-releases of games instead of brand new games just for the console, while the other list is pretty much WWE games. Leave a comment on how Moby Games is an unreliable sort. They started off simple in 2000 with the Activision TV games, which is a collection of Atari 2600 games. I found a couple of different images for it, but I think some of these are the Chinese version released through Toy Max. They took a pause on these till about 02 with more Atari games than the traditional 2600 controller style. This one sold pretty well, leading to Jax reaching out to Namco about the same thing. The Mishiba Zaibatsu saw the numbers from the Atari console and agreed, leading to a handful of these things. I'm gonna drop the year by year shtick now, cause who cares? And by that, I mean there's six different listings for Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. Four are repeats for the wireless Miss Pac-Man, a Game Key, a Gold version which had a few extra games, the Super Pac-Man, which had the title game and three other games on it. The Game Key idea sounds cool, but it's more shit to take up shelf space with little Game Boy-sized cartridges. 
Essentially, they added a few more games to certain releases of the plug and plays that had the port on it. A bunch of these later consoles had these, but again, it failed, because why would I want another thing I gotta keep track of or swap out? Spangleberg looks to be the first non-port job of not only a non-video game brand, but also a bunch of specially made games for the system. The games look to be about the quality of Flash games around the time, except blurrier? The same could be said for the Dora one and this generic Nicktoon one. Disney also got generic ones along with, uh, is that a Paint Princess one? Winifred Pooh Bear, Scoobert Doobert, uh, WWE, Care Bears, Bad Dragon. There's a bunch of these, but I'm certain someone out there knows more about the ones that I'm not showing here. Oh, I actually remember the Wheel of Fortune one and the World Poker Tour being the ones me and my dad played a bunch of. Uh, don't ask me why, since I remember we had a ton of actual game consoles, PlayStation, Nintendo, whatevers, but I distinctly remember sitting with my dad waiting for my mom before church or to go somewhere on the edge of their bed playing these two games and the distinct lack of music while playing them. I feel bad that there was a website dedicated to just the TV games here, but it looks like it was just a redirect to a set of pages on the Jack's main site. I can't really tell too much right now. When trying to look at it on the Wayback Machine, it comes up broken or Ruffle doesn't know how to display the site. I can't be bothered with trying to get the site working past what's shown here, since this is like, what, a minute's worth of the video, and it's not even the least talked about part of Jax as a whole. Jack uses the name for a bunch of other things as well, and I feel this is actually the least talked about part. I found a nice list of their subdivisions. I don't know how current this is, or if this is all of them, but think of this like a Nestle owns more than you think kind of thing. Jax kept a line of motocross toys called MXS, which I'm certain I had at one point or another because every boy or girl goes through that phase where they think owning a dirt bike or a motorcycle would be the sickest shit. They did the same thing with another line called Max Toe, so you can excite bike and excite truck in the real world. I didn't talk much about the dolls since I don't want to rile that nest right now, but apparently there was a line of doll houses called Me World, which isn't all that interesting until you read about the Dream Play technology, which, to cut through the corpo speak, made some sort of NFC toys with real world branding. Uh, they first did it with a Little Mermaid brand deal. The commercial shows a girl holding an iPad and this brooch, I think that's the word for it. It activates something in the app, but the commercial doesn't show what. If I try to look up anything on the company, the closest thing I think I found is a LinkedIn page for the company that has fuck all listed about it. And opening the link redirects to what appears to be some guy's personal business page. I don't think there's any harm in showing it blurred here, but please do not bother this man, as I refuse to do so myself. There's also a line for pet toys. Niggas just glicked up, double glicked up on the burger. Whoa. Kids furniture. For noodle. A role play. Why is that separate from costume? Disguise is probably the biggest subsidiary of Jack that's not toys. As the name implies, they're all about costumes. It feels like this is the company that keeps Party City and Spirit Halloween in business. Much like the rest of the company, they have focuses around very specific brands like Bendy and the Ink Machine. Is that really a hot property? I know how people get about Bluey, so I get that one. Funko Pop masks sound like a nightmare to negotiate as a brand, but that's unrelated to the fact that I fucking hate Funko Pops. Minecraft, My Little Pony, Pokemon. Squid Game! I think the only thing I'd want to buy from all this now that I'm in my 30s is probably the Treat Your Trunk kit. Uh, just because I like the idea of kids doing that compared to walking up to a stranger's house asking for candy. Especially since I don't care that much about buying a bunch of big ass decorations that I have to store in the remaining 11 months a year somewhere. The main YouTube channel seems to be doing fairly well for a corporate page. Uh, mainly, it's a repo for the company's commercials and various TV appearances or deals with other things, like a big Q&A with Chris Bratt and Jack Black for the Mario movie. However, there's another Jack-specific YouTube channel. 
Studio JP. So the quick story I could find was that this is originally going to be a joint venture with a Chinese anime studio for original multi-platform computer animated content. I'm fairly certain this is the YouTube channel only because the uploads that appear here appear to be old Jax brands and dog videos. Have at it and let me know what you think. Tastes really good. This is like well, a furry role play video awesome. if you close your eyes. Wow. It looks like you really like it, huh? Greatest thing ever. Greatest thing ever. Neos is the greatest ever. All right. Finally, the last thing I want to bring up is the Jax Cares charity program. Whenever I try to find some specifics on what the charity actually does, it seems fairly hidden, which is wild to me, since most companies love to brag about how they give back to those less fortunate. Instead, the only thing I could find easily was this Jax Care package thing, which is just a toy you could buy and for every Jax Care package sold, Jax Cares will donate to a child in need. Uh, no details on if they're giving the same toy or a cheaper toy or what, which is wild because the thing is like 40 bucks and it looks like it's worth four dollars. Well, let's try to keep positive. The charity arm supposedly exists because Friedman is a philanthropist. So what does the wiki say about him specifically? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, pretty much nothing of note. At least nothing that I can say was directly him and not Jax as a company. And nothing that wasn't just donations, which doesn't mean you were out here popping your philanthropic pussy. The last line of the section has two citations. One is a dead link and the other one is an archive from oneup.com about a dead man. Look, I know I started this video off impressed with Friedman as a businessman and to an extent, I still am, but getting to the end of this, knowing that essentially he worked right up until he died and won't be remembered for more than being the founder and head of three big companies has me a little disappointed. Uh, don't get me wrong, again, I refuse to stand for a company. Any business exists to make money, which is why I look at them and point at things that catch my attention specifically. Doing the same for an individual who I assume had dreams, needs, a family, and the will to make himself known enough to have the Wikipedia page about him is a bit alien to me. I even looked up Jax on Glassdoor and they seem to be mostly positively reviewed. Uh, the more recent calling out the old school management style and the need to put in the time at the company to move up. I mean, I've been working at companies like that for years and I fucking empathize, man. But it looks like they continue to be successful and the people there are mostly happy. Ultimately, Jax Pacific, from an outsider's point of view, is something that I was interested to look at. And while this was far from comprehensive, I encouraged you to do your own research or find another person who's willing to dig deeper. I'm just picking up the leaves of what's left behind like Elephant the Elephant. You absolute buffoon. <gasps> elephant is a Hasbro property. I can't believe I sat through this absolute 